So good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are waiting a few minutes uh, before we are able uh, to, to start. We haven't reached uh, the time yet. So we're waiting for um, the guest to arrive. And then I will give you a few information about uh, the translation. Bienvenue à tout le monde. Je vais commencer dans quelques secondes en vous donnant des informations sur... Bienvenue à tout le monde. Je vous donnerai quelques informations en ce qui concerne la traduction. J'attends encore quelques secondes pour que les participants puissent se connecter. Bienvenue à tous les collègues et amis francophones. Vous allez voir euh, au bas de votre écran, dans le menu, et je vais demander à Francesco de bien vouloir euh, me montrer la diapositive avec les instructions. C'est là. Deuxième. Ah, elle manque. Un instant. Je vois que notre slide est en, a disparu. Donc, je vais simplement vous expliquer en français, et je le ferai en anglais par la suite, qu'au bas de votre écran, vous avez euh, la possibilité de choisir euh, l'interprétation. Euh, pour les francophones qui souhaitent écouter et qui souhaitent parler en français, choisissez FR. I would like to let you know that uh, we have this uh, forum being in English and in French. For the English speakers and listener, I would kindly ask you to uh, go on the menu bar below and look at the icon with EN for English and stay in this channel whenever you want to talk or listen. Thank you very much. So it's my pleasure to welcome you all to uh, this regional forum on rural communication services for family farming in Africa. This uh, regional forum is taking place in the framework of Yenkaza Africa. 
Francesco, can you show me a little bit more? So Yen Casa Africa is a partnership and it's an initiative uh, really targeting uh, communication for rural development for family farmers organization, community media, communication entities and institutions. And Yen Casa exists because we have since 2019, the UN decade uh, on family farming. And Yenkasa is one uh, of the regional initiative. We have others in Asia, Comdev Asia, another one in Latin America called Onda Rural. So for Yenkasa Africa, our partners are the World Association of Community uh, Radio Broadcaster, AMARC in French, Digital Green, FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, Farm Radio International, La Via Campesina, Pan African Farmer Organizations, the Réseau des Organisations Paysannes de Producteurs de l'Afrique de l'Ouest, and La Plateforme des Organisations Paysannes d'Afrique Centrale as well as the World Association of a Christian Communication. So my name is Sophie Trinan. I am working for FAO in the Communication for Development team. Um, as, as soon as someone is speaking, we will put um, the bio of uh, each and every speaker in the chat. And this will be done in French as well as in English. So let me give you a few names, uh, a few words now on where does this regional forum fit? So this regional forum fits in the um, a series of meetings that will lead to the UNDFF Global Dialogue, which will take place on the 19th to the 22nd of September this year. And we started with the regional uh, the webinar on advancing rural communication services in Africa on the 9th of June. And all the things that we have heard, uh, we have had feedback uh, about, uh, were then taken on board and will be presented in this regional forum of today. What is very interesting is that we are having other events uh, in July. The first one will be in the UNDFF Forum on Inclusive Rural Communication Services for Family Farming. It's a global event on 11th of July. And then on the 14th of July, our colleagues from the Regional Office for Africa are organizing the Regional Dialogue on Family Farming for Africa. And all the recommendations, remarks that we are gathering today will be actually conveyed to these two events, but also to the UN Decade of Family Farming Global Dialogue of September. So the next slide is going to explain what are the objectives of uh, the forum which is to share findings and the lessons learned on the regional study that has been done on rural communication services, uh, to make recommendations uh, for, the promote, for promoting mechanisms for policy dialogue, knowledge sharing and collaboration on rural communication services, but also to promote the rural communication services agenda as part of the African region UN decade on family farmer, uh, farming process. And therefore, what we will try to do today is also to actually add activities well defined to support rural communication services as part of family farming national action plans in Africa. So the process of this uh, regional forum is we will have soon an opening with uh, our colleagues uh, Zoe Jones, who is heading the communication in the regional office of Africa. And then we will have two different uh, sessions. The first one on rural communication services, the trends, and then the experiences that we have been capitalizing about. And 
After a break, we will have the second session on the recommendation for advancing rural communication services for family farming. And then we will actually look at the way forward and then we will close this meeting after two hours. So now I would like to actually give the floor to Zoe Jones and maybe we can stop sharing the screen for a minute when uh, we have Zoe um, opening this regional forum. Thank you very much Zoe for joining. Thanks Sophie, thank you so much and hi to everybody. It's great to be here with everyone today. So I'd like to formally welcome you to this regional forum on rural communication services for family farming in Africa that's organized within the framework of the UN Decade of Family Farming, the UNDFF, that is in its third year of implementation. As you may know, the UNDFF Global Action Plan recognizes communication as an asset to advance family farming, to give voice to family farmers, to enhance their communication capacities and promote inclusive rural communication services. As Sophie just mentioned, these are also Yenkasa Africa's priorities and main lines of work that are the basis for collaboration among many family farmer organizations, media networks, academia, and institutions that have joined this initiative and that are represented here today. This regional forum will focus on the importance of rural communication services in Africa, presenting the findings of a regional study on this subject, along with the lessons learned from field experience. Zoe, I believe you're on mute. I'm so sorry. Let me pick that up. Um, I was saying that our session today will provide perspectives on the use of media and information and communications technology, or ICTs, and their adoption by farmers, as well as recommendations for advancing rural communication services for family farmers in Africa. It will also inform about next steps and activities promoted by YENCASA to support the UNDFF and the family farmer organization organizations in the region, such as a new Yenkasa radio initiative that will be shortly launched to support selected countries in the region, and there'll be more on that today. But thank you to everyone for attending today. Your contributions will feed into the Global Forum on Inclusive Rural Communication Services that will be held on the 11th of July. So I encourage you all to listen and engage and share today and your views and ideas on rural communication services are greatly appreciated and valued. In the Akan language of Ghana, Yankasa means our talk. So let's talk and start sharing. Thank you, and back to you, Sophie. Thank you very much for your welcoming uh, remarks. Uh, I would like now to really enter into our first uh, session. So, Francesco, can you share uh, the PowerPoint for the second session? And for this second session, uh, first session, sorry, uh, I will invite uh, Sarah Cardi, who is professor uh, at the University of Reading. And she's going to present us uh, the trends of rural communication uh, services. Uh, Sarah, are you with us? Yes, uh, I am. Hello, nice to see you, Sarah. Um, please tell us more about all these trends. The floor is yours. Thank you. So looking, uh, we're taking a very large snapshot knowing that uh, Africa is an enormous place. So thinking, remembering that there's there's some certainly going to be variability uh, between the different countries. But one of the, uh, these are some overall trends. Um, communication, particularly in rural areas, has was initially very top down and driven largely by governments with a single, for instance, with a single extension service or a single agricultural service. But over time, 
in the last decades, there's been a move towards more inclusive and farmer centric approaches, particularly moving from nationally controlled to locally controlled. So instead of having one government service provider, there has been a move towards multiple service providers at community levels. This can mean that in the one hand, this could mean that there's more choice for uh, rural communities, but it can also lead to fragmentation of services. So whereas you could be guaranteed one set of services that provide for all of the needs of rural communities when they're under a single government driven program, when there are multiple service providers, there isn't necessarily a guarantee that all of the services will be provided they could be fractured and they may not be of the same quality as if they were provided by a single government entity. So there's been this move from a top to a community driven approach and towards multiplicity in provision. And there's also been a rapid expansion, particularly within um, the African continent, a rapid expansion of telecommunications. So it went from very poor telecommunications infrastructure to large scale coverage of many areas by mobile phone, by internet facilities um, over time. This is more in urban areas, but there has been a substantial expansion in rural areas, both in terms of actually putting up the infrastructure, um, but also policy pushes that um, have emphasized the need for more connectivity in rural areas and, and between countries. So there's been this national expansion of telecommunication infrastructure and expansion of the abilities of individuals to use ICTs. Some of that is, is through capacity building and specific training in ICTs. And some of this is through generational learning where people are more familiar with and grow up with the technology. Um, so we've seen people doing more and adapting the technology and different technologies more over time. However, there is also there are also substantial inequalities in access and control of communication. One of the ones that we see consistently is gender or gender inequalities, and this is being able to get your hands on technology, but also being able to control and make decisions about it. This follows um, other uh, factors of, of, of social differentiation, things like age, rural versus urban, um, different uh, ethnic divides uh, and poverty and versus wealth. So these all have implications for access and for unequal access in the uh, access control and use of communication tools there still remains a disparity between rural and urban areas. Um, while it has shrunk a bit over time, it is still fairly substantial. And I'm sure people who are, who are here on this webinar all have experience is, with rural areas and not being able to get sufficient access, some of it by lack of infrastructure, some of it just the, the, the topography of the place. Um, but it, ha it means that there remains a digital rural divide in many parts of the world. We've also seen a trend towards increasing media diversity. So this means there are a large number of types of media channels. So radio and television and the internet apps and the use of mobile phones changes on a regular basis. Um, what people can use, what people have access to, and how they can take control over it changes regularly. And there is also great diversity in the use of media uh, and of the use of different communication tools. How people use them changes very quickly, and it is a rapidly changing and innovating environment. And then the other thing to, that comes out if we, if we look at communication is 
understanding that processes in communication can be just as important, sometimes more important than the technologies and the outputs. There's often a focus on outputs with communication, but process remains fundamental. Our next slide, please. So what then are the main elements and conditions that we, that we need to address to have uh, inclusive rural communication services? We need awareness raising and information. So we need information that is appropriate for the context that we're working in and is the right content at the right time. We need knowledge sharing and training, so empowerment, capacity building, and developing communication capacities, including ICTs. This means understanding how people use ICTs and building on that, but never assuming either a sufficient capacity or a lack of capacity. Um, and we need appropriate channels that fit people's bandwidth, mobile, uh, mobile phone access, language requirements. We need advocacy towards policymakers, so policies that enable communication. Um, and this sometimes means looking at policies where we that are not the obvious ones. So it means taking a holistic policy perspective, and it needs to be people centered. The users and farmers and rural communities need to be at the center of these policies. And finally, we need networking, partnership, and social mobilization. So collaboration, networking, working with different groups, different partners, be it farmer networks and uh, communication providers, non-governmental and governmental organizations. It needs to be inclusive, so recognize equity, and how do we commit to equitable access to information and communication? Next slide, please. So what are our priorities uh, for inclusive rural communication services? Um, the, again, they're, they're along the lines of the themes that I just raised. We need awareness raising and information. So access to communication. So both the technology and the ability to create and change and adapt communication, literacy, uh, timing, so the right information at the right time um, for the right people. We need knowledge sharing and training. So it needs to be innovative, that needs to be adaptive and inclusive. So it cannot be one size fits all. It does need to respond to the context, to the needs and interests of rural communities and of farmers. And it needs to capitalize on the knowledge that people have. We need to avoid the assumption that farmers do not have sufficient capacity. We need to first understand what are the rural narratives, what are the rural capacities and the capacities of farmers and build on that and learn from experience. Um, we need network, networking, partnership and social mobilization. So fundamentally participation and equity um, uh, towards, understand, towards addressing those lines of inequality that continue to exist. And finally, we need the advocacy towards policymakers. So policies around infrastructure, for instance, and some of the advocacy is going to be to private sector as well as public. So policies that enable uh, communication technologies that enable people to control and to use communication. It needs to be accessible. So people need to be able to get their hands on it, but also need to be able to adapt it and use it according to their needs and their concerns. It needs to be sustainable. Um, this needs to be a long-term commitment, not short-term um, efforts that can't, um, that will not continue to regenerate. And it needs to be affordable. Communication can be, we can have satellite phones, but that's often unaffordable to the vast majority of the world. So we need to think about how can accessible, sustainable, affordable, and equitable communication be advocated. Thank you very much, Sophie.
Thank you very much, uh, Sarah, for um, presenting us the trends and also to see how we can get the appropriation of rural communication services. So we have seen the trends now, but let's see how it works really. So we have invited now uh, five speakers, and I would kindly ask the speakers really to keep it uh, to the five minutes allocated and no, no more. Um, to share their experiences uh, and they will explain what have been done then what was the impact and so what are the lessons learned and the tips that they can share with us uh, while you're listening uh, to these presentations you are invited to put your questions in the chat uh, and we will actually have a q a session uh, after the presentations and the lessons learned and the conclusion. So now it's my pleasure to invite our first speaker from Ethiopia, Tamexan Gebeyu, who is actually the director of the Agriculture Transformation Agency. So Tamexan, are you with us? Are you ready? Yes, yes Sophie, yes. Welcome and uh, please, Tell us about your experience. It's a very interesting experience. Go ahead. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank you very much for engaging me in this journey. Uh, maybe uh, let me just uh, present our experience in terms of uh, maybe the advisory the extension and advisory service, uh, the rural communication in terms of the extension advisory service. Ethiopian. Uh, Agricultural Transformation Agency has a mandate of supporting the ministry in identifying systematic bottlenecks and addressing these systematic bottlenecks by introducing uh, innovative solutions. So one of the area we took is uh, advisory, the extension service. Uh, maybe uh, the Ethiop the e Ethiopia has one of the huge uh, human-based extension service uh, 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 about uh, 65,000 development agents are working to communicate the extension package to small order farmers. Uh, however, there is a problem in, uh, in actually communicating this uh, advisory or extension package to small order farmers. Mainly the key issues related to this are uh, farmers do not receive up-to-date information and knowledge in a timely manner. The technologies will be generated from the research institutes but it took time to reach to small order farmers. Uh, they need to go to provide trainings by cascading from the, uh, the ministry, uh, from the federal level to the, to the lowest district or, uh, or Kavali, in our context, Kavali level. So uh, this is one area. The other one is, the, even though we have the huge human-based uh, development agents or extension service, the human base or the development agents are one to 200, which means they don't have time to provide enough support for small order farmers. This one is the other issue. And when the other issues are whenever some kind of crop disease or pest infestation are happening, there is no mechanism or uh, the mechanism is very difficult to communicate about this occurrence. So in order to, to address these issues, we uh, conduct studies and and based on our context, the solution we, in, we introduced uh, is IVR and SMS-based solution. For example, for the first one, we are able to digitize the content and we introduce or we avail this for small order farmers so that they can directly call into the system and access advice or extension package about the content uh, via their basic phone. Uh, maybe just to give you some statistics, in Ethiopia, even now, the penetration of internet is 25%. Uh, relatively, the penetration of vo telecom or the mobile phone and telecom a SIM card is more than 50%. So by introducing this and by availing this with their local language in, in six local language, smaller the farmer can easily go and access by browsing to the, to the using their mobile phone. They can also get the support via the help desk system. They can forward their question and they'll be communicated with, with, uh, with the local experts. And by, by doing this, we also collect their profile information and 
we, uh, then they we will forward or will send out an early warning message whenever some kind of early warning and uh, uh, pest infestation or other type of in, uh, occurrence are happening in their locality. Next slide. You have two minutes left, uh, Tamek. Okay, so this is a, the, this shows how simple it is. Anyone can call. Uh, this can be found at household level. And so this is just for showing, as you can see, you can browse, you can go pre-planting, planting, you can crop, you can select crop and things like that. And as you can see, in the first one, you can select your language in five to six language. So next slide, maybe. Is, um, yeah. Uh, so let's learn it. Uh, the first lesson learned is uh, this IVR is very, very good extension tool for improving farmer knowledge about new agricultural practices. As you can see here, we have contents, advice, new approach about ag agricultural practice, about 21 crops, livestock, COVID-19 response, digital financial literacy. So this is a very, very important uh, considering our context, the level of penetration of mobile phone, the level of penetration of digital, the, the, the level of digital literacy and other issues. This is one learning. The other one is either improve participation of females comparing to other channels such as video. For, for video and for other channels, they need to go or they need to, to, to have more other services or product device. But with either, you can find one at least at household level and females have an opportunity of using that device and, and with the local language, they can call in and access the content. And this will help them improve their knowledge about the agricultural practice. Public-private partnership is also very important. Uh, as a public, as a, as, a, as a government level, there is a subsidy, there is investment, uh, and there is other issues, other uh, things which could be done and from the private side, there is a system development, promotion, and things like that. And this public-private partnership is very important. Uh, con co content uh, creation is also needs to be participatory. Uh, the content, uh, the call-in services call is, is generated at the top level. But whenever some kind of disease happens or uh, things like that, there is a collaboration between ATA ministry uh, digital green, uh, uh, see me it and others for like weight trust related advisory service and things like that. So uh, ma making content pass content creation should be participatory. Uh, the other thing is awareness creation should be a continuous exercise, uh, unless as uh, uh, unless uh, and as far as we communicate, the the, the service will be used until or as far as we communicate the, the public or the service we have, or, uh, otherwise it will not be used by smallholder farmer until sometimes they know about this and they know about the benefit and things like that. So this is what our learning, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, it was very interesting to hear from ATA and uh, advisory services in Ethiopia, which is actually something that can be uh, adopted in other places in Africa. I would like now to have another example, and this is coming from Ghana with the well-known ESOCO. And uh, I'm inviting Gordon Nikoi to actually explain what ESOCO is doing and how ESOCO is working in Ghana. So please, uh, Gordon, we the floor is yours. Is Gordon with us? Actually, I don't see him here. So uh, let's, um, Francesco, I suggest that we move to Minwata. So Minwata um, is Michael, Michael Neligua. So I invite now Michael to join and to explain um, how uh, Minwata is uh, using rural communication services and how they interlink with their audience. Michael, the floor is yours. And uh, Michael's bio will be in the chat. 
Uh, okay, thank you very much, Sophie, for welcoming me in presenting the initiatives that we are doing as La Via Campesina and also as Mviwata. Um, next slide, please. Okay, uh, Mviwata FM radio station is a community radio that is actually engaged in uh, find voices from the grassroots in numerous uh, aspects of peace and struggles. And its role is actually to disseminate information to rural communities that, that such voices are rarely covered by mainstream media. And also, Mduata uh, was established actually for the role of facilitating dialogues between intellectuals and the rural communities through numerous radio programs that are currently uh, operating. Okay, next slide. Okay, actually, what are, are the current impacts that you are has created? Actually, we are. Also in radio programs that has actually amplified the team for the agenda. Being operated in the agricultural budget. Uh, next slide. Okay. Okay. Uh, so actually. What are the lessons that or we would like to share with the artisans and the artisans actually to have the vo their voices amplified and supported the role that Mviwata is currently doing. And also uh, other lesson that we learn is that communication should be presented. And Michael, we the have... grassroots level. Okay. And also uh... the other I'm really sorry, Michael, but is your important? voice is breaking and we cannot hear you very well. So okay. uh, I'm actually fine. Okay, I thought that perhaps the connection is unstable, but uh, I was sharing about the lessons from the water and I'm thankful for that, uh, that I finalized the presentation. Okay, so um, we will share the presentation with the participants so we can catch up. But what is quite interesting also in the experience that you have shared with us is that because farmer's voice was heard, it had a repercussion in the budget of agriculture in the district. And um, so, as it, it's mentioned in the, the lessons learned, the farmers, they can defend their cause better than anybody else. And so that's why it's important to actually have them able to have their voice heard so that they can have the impact uh, on their uh, intervention in agriculture. So thank you very much uh, for this example. Uh, I will now move to Farm Radio International and I am inviting uh, Hannah Tellier, who is going to talk about something uh, different, uh, which is how to get feedback and to how to get the voice heard in another way. So uh, Hannah, welcome. And uh, we are delighted to hear your experience. Great. Thank you so much, Sophie. And thanks again to all of our participants for being here. It's really a pleasure to speak with you and to hear about all these incredible case studies uh, from around the world and from throughout Africa. And a pleasure to share our experience as well as Farm Radio International. Next slide, please. 
Great. So today I'm going to speak a little bit about an initiative that Farm Radio uh, conducted uh, along with EFAD uh, called the On Air Dialogues. Um, so the context was that the uh, United Nations Food Systems Summit was upcoming in 2021. And as Farm Radio International, our priority is centering um, farmers um, and the experiences of rural people, especially women and youth. And so we wanted to ensure that um, the voices of rural people were being taken into account in the Food Systems Summit. And that would be our contribution to the summit. And so we, what we did was we created a, a very short series of radio programs about climate change. And on air, broadcasters discussed uh, things like the impacts of climate change uh, locally, some local solutions. Um, and this on air dialogue prompted listeners to share their own ideas and contribute to the conversation, sharing their own ideas, knowledge, uh, experiences and especially their needs uh, with regards to climate change uh, and climate adaptation and mitigation. And to do this, um, we invited listeners to use an interactive voice response system or an IVR system, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And so we asked closed ended questions, um, which listeners could respond to using their keypad. Uh, so there would be, say, four possible answers and listeners would select their answers, selecting one of four numbers. Um, we also asked open-ended questions, and to these, listeners recorded uh, audio messages, much like we do on WhatsApp. Um, and so that was able to give us a really sort of fulsome response from listeners um, so that they could fully express their concerns, ideas, needs, etc. Um, this has been a theme throughout our presentation today, but rural people know best the issues facing them and the solutions that they want and they need. And so uh, rural people must also play an essential role in helping to inform policy and programs and projects that respond to these issues. Um, and uh, this interactive voice uh, response system was a really great way to be able to do that. So what was the result? What was the impact? We ended up hearing from a little under 3,500 people in four countries, and they provided uh, nearly 12,000 total responses, of which 2,600 were voice recordings. So we analyzed all of this data, we created a report, and we submitted it to the Food Systems Summit. Um, and we also now have a website which features the real voices of respondents. Um, the impact, we were able to demonstrate that through radio, you can consult rural people directly. And so this is a, a way to be able to reach at scale, potentially through multiple radio stations in multiple countries, millions of rural people and run participatory processes so that as um, international organizations, um, we can take into account the real feedback of rural people and inform climate solutions as we run projects, programs, or inform policy going forward. Next slide. So what did we learn? Um, there were some key challenges, of course, as there always are, um, and, and we have some tips to share around those. I only have about a minute left, so I'll, I'll move rather quickly. Um, We've mentioned gender a number of times already today. It is difficult often to reach women. Some of the ways that we're able to do that using mobile phones and radio is to have um, women only phone lines. Um, and so this helps women feel comfortable um, by perhaps hearing the voice of a woman on, uh, on the recording that we provide through the IVR system. Also, it lets women know that we value their voices. Um, if we say well, this is a women-only phone line, women know that there is a space um, for their feedback, for their input, and that that will be valued and taken into account. Um, in the future, and something that we've experimented with in the past, is more training around using mobile phones, keypads, for example, because literacy can be an issue. Um, looking at the numbers or the letters on a keypad, and so designing training approaches that are locally appropriate to address um, that knowledge gap. Um, and then also something we've done in the past as Farm Radio is promoting a program within women's groups or creating women-only listener groups. 
And this again creates a space within the community for women um, to be able to um, enjoy the program together, interact and engage on the content and then contribute to the discussion. Finally, in language, language is extremely important for information access. Um, it must be available in the language of the users. And so at minimum, our recommendation is to translate materials into one to two local languages outside of international languages like English, French, but also Spanish, Portuguese, etc. And this helps to familiarize audiences with outside terms or concepts um, and using the, the local vernacular, the, the local vo vocabulary really helps an audience to connect to an issue and also express themselves freely in their own language as well. So I'll end there today and say thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. This is really great. And uh, we have learned a few tips and uh, I also appreciate all the gender aspects that you mentioned to have dedicated line uh, for women so that they can uh, be more confident and share uh, what they have and they wish to share. And also, you don't need to have a smartphone. You can actually use a mobile phone uh, and uh, use a, um, easily uh, different uh, numbers to also, also give your advice or, or opinion. So um, I'm now very happy to invite uh, Winfred uh, from the Farmerville School because uh, she has also an interesting approach on how we can use information and communication technologies to support the facilitators of the Farmer Field School. So now I would like to invite Winnie. Winnie, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you, Sophie, thank you. So go ahead, uh, please share your experience. We are listening to you. All right. Uh, my name is Winifred Nalimbo. I work with the FAO's Plant Production and Protection Division. And my presentation this afternoon uh, is going to give you an overview of the work we are doing to bring ICT to the, to the communities, to the farmers. Um, first slide, please. So the Farmer Field School, briefly, um, uh, is a methodology that employs participatory learning processes where farmers carry out basic research through experimentation and validation studies to understand the how and why of the given phenomenon. So the objective of the field school is to empower farmers with knowledge and skills to make them experts in their own field so that they can make informed um, field management decisions in a timely manner. I think we all appreciate that today the farmers are operating in an environment with the usual challenges of pests, diseases, environmental deterioration, and so on. But the bigger challenge is that they are getting increasingly frequent, widespread, and intense in nature. So under the circumstances, it is obvious that we need to adapt to the changes and innovate in order to bring new information, knowledge, uh, techniques, technologies to the farmers. As, and also it is imperative that we reach out uh, to more farmers within the communities. We need to scale out our messages. And so using the, 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 the available expertise so that it's more efficient and we think that it's time for us to embrace the use of ICTs in the field school as a means to achieve this, to be able to also achieve our goals. Next slide, please. So we are in the process at the Global Farmer Field School platform of refining and what we have called an e-tips document. It's e-tips and it is tips as it shows um, to empower the facilitators to be able to take ICTs uh, or integrate ICTs in facilitating the field schools and also encourage the farmers or motivate them to get, uh, to get on board. So the document is providing examples. We are not reinventing the wheel. We are looking at all the good work that is being done, like what has been presented, and we would like to amplify that in terms of giving tips, examples to the facilitators uh, to use 
what is existing. So where there are no, farm, um, no connectivity, for example, there's no electricity, uh, we are saying that the facilitators can support the farmers to operate within their means and pick examples like the Dimitra. Sophie, please click uh, listeners clubs where communities are able to connect just um, by use of a simple solar powered radio and uh, sometimes combined with basic phone, they're able to connect, discuss issues that are, are, are disturbing them. And the talking box, a simple device which has pre-recorded messages with over 140 hours of audio content um, given to farmers in Ghana, they're able to get technical messages without having to you know, incur costs or look for the internet or anything. Next. Um, we are looking at locations where farmers may be faced with access challenges. Maybe they don't have the incomes. Maybe they're very, very rural, their gender issues and so on. These challenges that everybody talks about. We are saying our facilitators could take the ICTs to the farmer. Sophie, bring the ICTs to the farmer. For example, Access Agriculture has the farmer to farmer videos and the many of these available. A good facilitator could download this and go and show them to the farmers so that they are able to, to learn from what is happening elsewhere in the world. And of course, there are communities that simply just need, they have whatever is required, they are connected, but they need awareness. They need to know what is happening around the world. So for this, we are saying, let them be sensitized let them give it, be given the information, show them how to do it, Sophie, show them how to, um, to say download. Um, Francesco, can you? Yeah. To download applications, connect to the internet, or maybe text messages using the various uh, messenger uh, apps that are available. So this is what we are uh, putting in this tips document for the facilitator. And so we are saying that it's important to demystify the ICTs. And this is for all of us all because the ICT space is wide enough to accommodate all categories of farmers, uh, right from those who, who can only afford to use the basic radio to form to the high-tech drums. So we're saying that it is important to be creative and make the ICTs usable by the rural population and support them to evaluate their situations um, and decide what works in their context. If they appreciate the value of ICTs, they should be able to embrace them. And that would include even paying a small cost when necessary to use the ICTs. So thank you very much. So we are saying we should not uh, let everybody or farmers regard ICT as rocket science. And so the last slide is to just for information about the Global Pharma Food School platform. It's for your reading later on. Thank you very much. Thank you so, very yeah. much, uh, Winfred. Uh, this was really interesting also showing uh, what you can do when you have no connectivity, little connectivity and better connectivity. So we have to be thinking outside of the box and be creative. So with all these different examples, and ESOCO was more about market access, unfortunately due to time restriction, I would invite Digital Green who has been working on these case studies to share with us the lessons learned from them and so I'm inviting uh, Ankita Sig to present us these lessons learned. Ankita, the floor is yours. Uh, Sophie, this is Chelsea. I've been pinging her and I don't see her online, so I don't know what has happened, but I'm happy to step in in Ankita's behalf, if that's okay. That's perfectly okay. Go ahead, Chelsea. Wonderful. So and uh, a lot of what I will say will sound a little repetitive because the lessons that all of our speakers have shared already really align with what we've learned from these case studies. So that's, uh, you know, wonderful. Um, also, um, these are the lessons from the case studies, but we also presented these to the Yenkasa Africa Community of Practice. So we have also integrated the, um, the discussions that we had a few weeks back into our lessons as a whole. 
So with regards to information, um, and Sarah also mentioned this, the right information at the right time is critical. There's no point in sharing information that is off season, that does, is not relevant to what's happening in your crop cycle, for instance. And in a similar vein, the content must be adapted to the context. So it's localized and relevant. Otherwise, again, it's not usable. Farmers are also interested in diverse information uses and co-creation and participation is very important. Um, for instance, in Digital Green's video approach, uh, we're working with farmers for farmers. So our content is really integrating their participation. We must also make uh, knowledge sharing a two-way street. So that's when um, initiatives such as like the interactive voice response or IVR with the Ethiopian ATA is very uh, important. Then um, the case studies we've researched also reveal that voice messages and SMS are very important RCT tools. Um, and relying on information dissemination using text may not necessarily be effective, especially in areas where literacy rates are low. Um, and going back to the integrated voice response, in many cases that yields better results. Um, you know, interactive voice response can be scalable at marginal cost. And in Ethiopia, um, IVR has been highly effective at a low cost. And as um, Temeskan presented, when IVR is targeted to women, it can be extremely um, you know, impactful. In terms of technology and infrastructure, uh, the local communication and digital infrastructure of a country, of a region, and then of a village determine what I, uh, RCS or rural communication services and what approaches and tools to be used. Um, in terms of communication devices, you know, rural communication services should be diverse and not solely be delivered on a smartphone. There's a need to ensure that everyone has the knowledge of how to use these communication devices and methods. So, you know, a focus on digital literacy. But again, uh, we should not just solely have in mind smartphones because, you know, they're, um, that, that would be too limiting. You know, you know, like like it's been presented, IVR can be used on regular um, feature phones. Um, onwards to um, knowledge and sharing. Um, some of the key learnings here are related to peer-to-peer -peer learning, adapting experiences and local knowledges. Um, farmers want to learn from people like themselves. They also want to see experiences adapted to their local context. And based on one of the surveys that we undertook. Farmers are interested in learning new farming practices such as mechanization, but they also want to build on their local or indigenous knowledge. Um, there's also a need for continuous awareness raising. You know, the sustainability of any rural communication service or yeah, any RCS is dependent on its adoption. And the only way to increase the adoption adaptation is to continuously invest in raising awareness and keeping farmers updated on the latest technologies. So again, um, and raising this awareness is not just for farmers, but also for policymakers and media. And moving on to capacity development. And as noted before, some of the important learnings in terms of capacity development include peer-to-peer -peer learning, digital skills and digital literacy, and also including e-learning approaches where feasible. Lastly, lessons from the case study revealed that we must use participatory methodologies for building networks and partnerships for social mobilization. Um, networking and partnerships are key components of social mobilization and strategic to creating consensus and promoting resource sharing and synergies. And this can be achieved through a variety of communication tools that can include face-to-face -face meetings, but also seminars and social media and posters you know, and that all depends on the target of the alliance you're trying to build. So these are just some of the lessons that we've learned. And thank you everyone for sharing your insights and back to you, Sophie. Thank you, Chelsea. And thank you for doing this uh, like that. Um, it was really well uh, structured and, uh, and clear. 
So now that uh, we have had that, I would like to, in, we have had all these cases uh, showing us uh, how they can be used, these are the rural communication services. Uh, Mario Acunzo, who is the team leader of the FAO Communication for Development team, will actually present us the collaborative framework of rural communication services. Mario, please, you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Sophie, and thank you all for these uh, amazing experiences. Please, uh, next slide. So we all know that communication is a driver uh, for the rural transformation in rural areas. This is also acknowledged by the Global Action Plan of the UN Decade of Family Farming. You know? So this, the, this Global Action Plan recognizes the needs to give voice of family farmers to enhance their communication capacity and to institutionalize rural communication services as part of the national family farming policies and initiatives in general. So communication is at the heart. No, just please back to the, okay, thank you. So what are the rural communication services? Those include, as we have seen now, a wide range of farmer center, and this is the main element, the farmer center approaches and activities to end also, but also institutional arrangements. So let's say there is a, an evolution, so from the project to the institutionalization within the context of the policies. This is what is needed. So we don't need just project-based activity, we need policies that enable these services. And these services have to deliver relevant content, so suitable communication processes and activities, and the use of uh, appropriate media and ICTs that have to be institutionalized to provide on a regular basis, demand-driven communication uh, activities, services, based on the case by case, by the needs of the people, by the needs of family family. So there is a need for negotiating and institutionalizing these services that are very different among them, according to the agroecological conditions and the role and the priorities of the farmers organization. Next step. So the, this collaborative framework of rural communication services includes guiding principles, approaches, strategies, facilitating uh, activities, but also this institutional dimension. And the overall goal is to enhance capacity for informed decision-making and collective action by rural people. So this is the framework. We are collecting experiences, point of views, and we are trying to foster a dialogue between farmers' organization and institutions and governments to make this uh, available within the context of the national uh, family farming policy, agricultural policy. Next slide. There are a few features that are very important. So we have to start with the people needs at the center. So to enhance local communication processes and capacity. So this is the basis. This can be, cannot be centralized. Rural communication services have to be decentralized at the territorial level. But also we have to facilitate the convergence and appropriation between medias and ICTs. So local media and ICTs to do what? To foster dialogue mediation and knowledge sharing, right? to make available the local knowledge and the technical knowledge that is appropriate for family farmers. Next slide. So uh, in the overall, the UNDFF requires communication support at different levels. We know that these rural communication services are part of a broader type of activity. So awareness raising, so facilitate this awareness to facilitate and make visible in the agenda of policy makers and governments at the role of family farmers. But also we need communication strategies and capacity at the local level. At the same time, we have to institutionalize, so systematize, document, and institutionalize this experience at the policy level. So the rural communication services is a framework. It's a framework to promote inclusive communication services by supporting and scaling Gap existing initiatives, such as those that we have seen, strengthening the linkages between rural institutions, farmers' organizations, and communities to negotiate those services. So, Yen Casa offers a space for uh, knowledge sharing, advocacy, and collaboration in this field, but also promotes an RCS agenda, eh? mobilizing technical support, capacity development, and awareness raising uh, to mainstream rural communication services as part of family farming policies and as part of the activities of farmers organization in African countries. This is in a nutshell and uh, thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Mario, for providing this uh, great framework and uh, enable us to actually put all the dots uh, together. So um, now I would like to invite, uh, which will be the, the next slide, who will uh, explain um, what are the main conclusions that uh, we have been able to gather uh, after the webinar that we had on the 9th of June and taking into consideration the different cases that have been proposed. So Francesco, I'm happy to invite you to take the floor. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, colleagues. Um, well, you know, after all these presentations, uh, the most important thing I believe is to really understand the process that we are approaching. Uh, the first step is, of course, the development of inclusive and sustainable rural communication services. I mean, we have to work together in order to foster the development of media outlets, ICT applications, social mobilization, in order to create this collaborative framework that Mario just explained. The second step is, of course, to support the national election plans and family farmers through these communication services. We have to use these communication services in order to support the policies for family farmers and in especially support the national actions plan. The third step is, of course, the most complicated one, is the institutionalization of rural communication services. That, of course, is a process, probably a long-term process. There are, of course, few key elements that we have to bear in mind. Collection of evidence, first of all, if we want to foster the development of inclusive and sustainable rural communication services, we have to map the existing rural services in rural areas and see the collection through the collection of primary data and secondary data that basically we already have. We have a fragmented uh, system of communication. Therefore, it's really fundamental to map all of them, collect the evidence, the needs, and the priorities. The second step is fundamental as well, advocacy towards policymakers. It is clear uh, that we have to support the farmers reaching their own capacity to advocate for enabling farmer-centered policies. But it is also important, as we have seen, that it is important also to support the promotion of legal framework for the communication infrastructure in rural areas to guarantee accessible and sustainable rural communication services. We have seen this in many cases, no connectivity, poor connectivity, connectivity too, uh, cost too high for the connectivity. The third step here is to design participatory communication services. And of course, in this case, the first step is to have a clear and shared concept among all of us, all the stakeholders of what we mean by rural communication services and we increase the outreach in communities and of course in local languages. The second step, as we said, it's really to support the national action plans and through communication services and uh, the uh, communication in general. So first of all, we have seen it many, many times awareness raising and information. Therefore, promote regular awareness raising campaigns, use the appropriate channels, radio, social networks, uh, the engagement of stakeholders, and of course, a collective action towards the development of the national actions plan for family farming. The second fundamental aspect is also knowledge sharing and training. We know that we have to adapt the knowledge in farming practices through communication approaches, social innovation, which is key or in order to promote these new and adapt new ways of sharing knowledge. And in particular, digital literacy, focusing on women, youth, and vulnerable communities. And for this, we can promote community of practices for bottom-up and horizontal knowledge sharing. Of course, all this will come to the CONDER strategies, how to support the implementation of the National Actions Plan for Family Farming through CONDER strategies, 
mainstreaming these rural communication services, of course, in key selected counties. It's a, it's a process, it's a step-by-step -step process. Finally, the last step, colleagues, is the long-term challenge that we are now approaching. Support the institutionalization of rural communication. And by institutionalization, we want them regular, stable, so first of all, it's the evidence of impact. Capitalize what we know. Capitalize and promote this uh, institutionalization through documenting the experiences, the lessons learned, advocating for their upscaling. And of course, continue with the policy dialogue, which is fundamental. We have to mainstream rural communication services as part of family farming policies and national action plans. And this can be done only together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francesco. That was a very nice way to actually uh, show the main conclusions that I have been done uh, with all the, the, the studies that have uh, taken place. So now uh, we have reached the Q&A and the cl clarification, but we would like to know if we have forgotten anything in what we have been presenting. So. I'm inviting uh, you to actually raise your hand or uh, look in, uh, at the question in the chat. So I will ask now Uloma uh, whether there are any questions that uh, uh, she would like to highlight to us. Uloma. Um, thank you, Sophie. Currently, there are no questions. But there's a great point here from K2. Um, it's communication is a tire that enables development in our community. So she said, um, a, car without, a car without a tire can't move. And now to, de to developing our communities, there should be a proper and good communication channels. So that's, that's why I say communication is a tire to development of communities. Um, that's a good point. And we also have another point from Christoph. He said, the, the, the information are right at the right time. However, farmers in parts of Africa receive contradictory or conflicting information all the time. We have to deal with that predicament. So these are the two comments currently. Um, I see um, Leon's hand up, if you would like to mute us, unmute yourself and speak. Okay, Leon, the floor is yours. Leon? Oui, merci beaucoup, uh, merci beaucoup. Yes, th yes, thank you very much. Uh, like you said, I am Leon Sizungu. I am in uh, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and I'm part of the uh, Research Center, uh, Agroecological uh, Research Center. Uh, uh, please, uh, can you... Uh, Make sure that it's translated. Yes, it's automatically done, don't worry. So in a DRC, uh, uh, we uh, intervene in this approach, this uh, uh, family farming approach, and we participate in uh, forums that are organized by the FAO uh, uh, through this approach. But we always wanted to make sure that everything is understood within the community uh, because we have a journalist uh, that uh, go with the uh, farmers uh, in the rural areas and that need to really understand this approach because in the areas where we are uh, in our intervention areas of our program we really need a, a, a journalist that really understand well uh, of this approach, family farming approach. And that is uh, why I wanted to know how all of us together with this uh, support from FAO, uh, FAO to uh, assimilate this approach so that we can uh, um, mainstream it uh, around uh, with the journalists and the uh, farmers. And it's the approach that is uh, really used uh, and uh, practiced by the farmers and that we appreciate. And we have a project uh, for that in three uh, territories in the uh, region of South Kivu. And so my question is, uh, how can we, how can we 
have uh, the, to uh, uh, deepen this approach because uh, our media teams and the journalists, they would like to have uh, uh, have uh, better ideas regarding that, maybe to have a special session for them so that can, they can really improve their work on the field. Thank you very much, uh, Leon, for this uh, question to which I'm going to answer in French. I am uh, happy to inform you that we will have some uh, training that will happen, and especially one in French, uh, on the capitalization of experiences that is also a participatory approach. And so it's a planned uh, for the last quarter of this year. Uh, additionally, my colleagues are going to make it uh, more precise in this, the second part of this forum. Uh, they also have other trainings to propose, whether it's uh, in video, uh, participatory video. So, Leon, uh, let's keep in touch because we are here to support you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. So the uh, DRC uh, is in our list of countries to support. And now I see Tanya, Tanya Bierbeck. Oh, Tanya, you have a question. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, so my name is Tanya Bergbeck, and I'm head of communications and capacity building in South Sudan for FAO. Uh, and uh, as part of my job, I actually just took on the role as head of communications. I've been here for uh, just about six years doing uh, basically farm radio. We started out doing radio for cattle keepers specifically. And now, along with uh, John Reagan, who is also here in this forum, we produce a, a weekly radio program called Ziratana, which means uh, our farm in local Arabic. So we produce this show, it has three elements. Uh, it has a, uh, what we say in FAO is a climate downscaling uh, of information. Basically in plain speak or speak for our farmers, this means it's a weather forecast and a weather information report, which is really, really important, uh, especially with climate change affecting the country. We have a lot of floods in South Sudan. So at this point, we want to not only give information about the changes in the seasons, but the unusual changes that are happening and give farmers advice about how they can mitigate the effects and how they can recover from that. Uh, so we produce this show with the uh, climate information at the beginning, and then we have specific information, specific uh, advice for the farmers that is related to uh, the climate event or the weather event or the season that we're talking about in the weather information portion of the show. And then finally, we have uh, voices from our farmers, and we have a network of radio stations that we work with across the country. Uh, so we have, uh, Hannah, I see your, your note here. I'll, I'll contact you afterwards, thank you. Uh, we have a network of radio stations across the country and uh, we are able to get farmers voices from across South Sudan. So a farmer who normally wouldn't be able to speak to another farmer across the country in a different language, they'll hear about each other's experiences and be able to share best practices and success stories, or maybe even things that haven't worked as well. So this is a program we do, we record it in Juba in local Arabic, and it's broadcast across the country on repeaters. And then we work with local radio stations, uh, sort of subject to funding. We've had more uh, stations on board. Right now we have a few less based on the amount of funding we have, where they're able to translate uh, the radio programs into their local language. Uh, so that's the sort of centerpiece of the radio programming we do. We also do some participatory radio events in communities where people are able to join together and we actually record the radio program in front of the community and then people can raise their hand, give their feedback or their questions to the experts. And then it's all edited and recorded for everybody else to be able to listen. Uh, so that's just a, a quick background on what we do here in so now you hear about other uh, people in other countries who are doing similar work. I have to say that in all the time that I've been working on these radio programs in South Sudan, this is the first time that I've had an opportunity 
to uh, listen to the experiences of other people in the region. And I'm very, very grateful for that. And I hope it's a conversation which we can continue. Uh, one thing about feedback, I just wanted to say this has already been a really uh, illustrative experience for me because when Hannah was talking about uh, getting feedback and how women are sometimes more comfortable uh, hearing a woman at the other end of the line, it made me think that this is a, an improvement that we could make to our radio program because we have a, a number that people can call 515 and we've been reading the feedback that we get on this uh, on this line. But it just occurred to me that we actually, there's a real human being. Her name is Mary Pony and she works for FAO South Sudan. And I think I'm going to invite Mary to come on to our program and read the uh, feedback that she gets on the line because then people will actually know that there is a real person waiting to get their feedback and it, it is also a woman. So maybe some people would feel more comfortable knowing that there's actually a woman in Juba waiting to hear their calls. Uh, so that's just a little bit of background about what we're doing in South Sudan. Uh, as far as a question goes, I would be really interested to hear about how anyone has adapted video because we are about to launch uh, Zeratana TV. Right now we're doing Zeratana radio. We're going to do TV. It's going to be broadcast on the uh, national broadcaster, um, SSBC, but uh, television is uh, very, very limited in South Sudan. So we're looking at some other ways, uh, including mobile cinema. So if anybody has experience with that, I'd love to hear about it. And I'd also like to know if anyone has experience doing some digital adaptations to uh, video and television applications, because uh, we know that radio is principally one of the best ways to reach our audience, but we do also want to integrate some video, especially for things which are best uh, when there's some kind of a demonstration, like how to plant a tree or how to create rows in your planting or something like that, where it's actually seeing it would uh, be really beneficial. So uh, that's my, my feedback and my question. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Very interesting. And I'm really happy that actually people are learning from each other uh, in this forum and that this is also the purpose of it. Um, I have Omar, Omar Dio from Senegal. And then after that, I have uh, Francesco. Please make it short if possible. Omar, vous avez la parole. Vous pouvez parler en français. Omar, you have the mic. You can speak in French in the French channel. Omar? Omar Dio? Vous pouvez activer votre micro. You can activate your mic et poser votre question. and ask your question. Merci beaucoup, tout le monde. Yes, thank you very much. My name, can you hear me? Très bien, très bien. Yes, very well. Okay, so my name is Omar Dio. Merci beaucoup, tout le monde. Thank you very much uh, to all. Uh, greetings. Also, thank you uh, f uh, to allow me to participate to this important uh, uh, meeting. Uh, even if I'm not really, uh, uh, really not in the agricultural side, but I am the son of uh, of agriculture of a farmer. Uh, and I am more in the fishing domain. Uh, I have two questions. The first question is that during the whole presentation, I've not heard, uh, uh, I've not heard about any activity that is organized to really uh, 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 share the message. But I think there are activities that we can organize to uh, distribute the message. Like I was telling you, I'm a son of a, a big farmer, and in the rural areas, there are two activities that we organize. The first one is a, a football competition that uh, group all the different uh, villages uh, organized in the uh, local area and all the villages they participate. And the second activity is a, a, a fighting activity. So uh, after the harvest, we organize uh, fighting uh, uh, sessions, and I uh, know what I'm talking about because I promote those activities. 
my village, uh, they uh, asked me uh, to um, organize uh, those uh, fighting sessions and I was able to organize that in different uh, areas. And it really brings a lot of people. And in these activities, you can also share the messages. I think uh, we should uh, really integrate all of those aspects. Also, uh, I also realized that, I also realized that there are two domains that go together, agriculture and uh, fishing. You know, they uh, they go together, you know very well, uh, Chibutiam, uh, it's a rice with a fish. And uh, you we really have to link these two domains because there are actors that are really interesting, uh, uh, very important, and there is a problem of communication. Uh, and also a problem in terms of decision making because we take the decisions at the top and we don't engage the people at the bottom and i think it's the same if you go to the rural areas i hear sometimes in the programs that happen on television there are some farmers that say that oh we only talk with the managers but we don't uh, talk with the people at the bottom and it's the same in the fishing uh, domain um, and sometimes the decision makers they sign uh, uh, they sign uh, 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 policies that are not beneficial uh, to the fishermen. So, if we can have uh, some people that support us uh, more uh, in terms of uh, awareness and uh, communication. When I talk about this, uh, I, I talk and I know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, and so I am the director of an association that uh, group uh, all the uh, facilitators that uh, do uh, different uh, programs in the uh, fishing domain. So I don't want to take too long, uh, but I am very happy to participate in this event and uh, that allowed me to, to to discover a lot of things about agriculture thank you so much sophie thank you omar i am very very happy that you underline uh, the uh, fishing sector because uh, this year is the international uh, year of uh, 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 local fishing and uh, when we talk about uh, family farming in uh, agriculture, in uh, farming, we talk about uh, forest, um, fishing, or everything that is done for environment and uh, climate change. So I really want to confirm that we will continue to uh, talk, uh, to eat uh, rice with a uh, fish. And I think my colleague Francesco has uh, his hand raised because he's going to respond to some of the questions. And I would like to uh, uh, give a, uh, leave a little bit of suspense because we are going to give more response a little bit later, but first I give the mic to Francesco. Yes, I am a radio uh, um, man, so I, I can manage minutes and seconds, but just to, uh, uh, answer to these last two uh, uh, participation, where the structures are really in the, those two countries, the structures are really incre incredible. We know that in Kivu, there are a lot of radios uh, in all the different regions and same thing in Senegal, uh, where the, uh, the radio network that you are talking to us about, Omar, there is also another huge network called URAC that group all the different community radio stations. So we know there are incredible experiences. And in our side, we also uh, uh, we commit ourselves to work on that aspect. Um, it will be uh, hard to explain that quickly, but with a training that uh, will uh, uh, talk about um, uh, to, to mention modules to uh, uh, for the farmers, the, 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 the family of the farmers, uh, 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 and to create that co collaboration uh, with the radios and the families. And just to say that in the second part, 
of this uh, webinar, we are going to talk about this question, and it's something uh, that I I, uh, I really uh, support because I have a lot of experience in the radio, uh, more than 25 years, and there is a lot of experience that I could share and capitalize. So I really invite you to share, to stay with us uh, because we are going to uh, talk about this more in a little bit. Um, thank you very much. Francesco, uh, and I'm going to ask you to uh, um, to ask you to show the next uh, uh, slide, and we are going to, to have a little break with some videos that we are going to share with you, uh, uh, and uh, actually on uh, artisanal fisheries and aquaculture. And after that, we uh, meet again in five minutes. Our small actions can have big impact, like a ripple effect. Small-scale fishing and aquaculture can bring food to one family and provides healthy nutrition to millions more. It brings value to all. Small-scale fishers and fish farmers also know what it means to preserve the balance in our ecosystem. But our livelihoods are at risk. Now, more than ever, we need to be resilient. Include us in decisions that affect us. And we will adapt and innovate with the changing tide. We may be small in scale, but our way of life will keep on making a difference and spread like ripples in the water. Welcome back. I hope uh, you liked the. Um... Welcome back. I am uh, happy 
uh, to now start the second uh, session. Uh, sorry, Clementina, for jumping from French to English. <laughs> um, so the second uh, session will go a little bit uh, deeper. But before that, there is one thing I would like to do. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, to take a picture of you. So uh, this is why um, if you could switch on all your video, that will give us the possibility to do several group pictures. So I wait just a few seconds. And this will also give the time to Francesco to prepare uh, the, um, the next uh, presentation for the session too. So, dear colleagues and friends, are you ready? Big smile and we are going to take a few pictures. So, one, two, three. And let's do always better to do several. So, and I hope that several people in the team will be able to do that. Once more, are you ready? One, two, three. I'm Antoine Cantista from Burundi. Okay, so very happy to have you back. Uh, it's also very nice to see all your faces. It's not only dark screen, it's also nice also because we are in direct on Facebook and uh, so the people can also see who is uh, in this meeting. So uh, we were about 60 earlier on, now we are about 55 for the second session. So um, now I'm going to be on the other part of not doing the moderation than being uh, maybe someone speaking. So I will actually give the floor to my co-facilitator, uh, Uloma. Uloma, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you. Um, Francesco, this could you. Thank you. Um, so this session, we are going to be um, talking about the recommendation of rural communication services in Africa. And we have a panel discussion where we have four participants. Um, we have um, four participants from four different organizations. Next slide, please. We have Tennis Gan, BBU, Program Director from Digital Agriculture at Ethiopian Agricultural Transformation Agency. We have Alice Van der Elstraten, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Knowledge Management and M&A Analyst in IFAD. We have Peter Anadumba, South South Corporation Officer for FAU Regional Office for Africa. And lastly, we have Omar Dio, the President of the Association of Community and General Video Communicators. So um, to get into the presentation real quick, um, the first question, um, this first question goes to Temes Gan. Please, can you tell us what will you what will you recommend as a ways to mainstream rural communication services for family farmers in national policy based on your work experience? Temes Khan, please, the floor is yours. Um, I believe maybe his currently not in the chat. So, uh, okay, he's currently off. So I will give the floor to Alice. Alice, please, could you um, answer the same question based on your work experience? Thank you very much. Um, I would like to, to emphasize with my contribution, the role of farmers organizations in this process. Uh, we have uh, some of them here with us today. I have seen my uh, colleague from PAFO connected, so I guess there's more. Um, farmers organizations play a key role. They will provide rural communication services and they have a good position to advocate for them to be mainstreamed in national policies. 
During the COVID-19 crisis, we, we saw an enormous increase in the role of farmers' organizations in sharing accurate and timely information with farmers. Um, they, um, farmers turned to their own organizations as a trusted source of information. And they were sometimes overloaded with information that was not always useful or not always correct, or maybe even you know, myths that, uh, that appeared on this topic that was completely new. And nobody in the end really knew which to believe. And the farmers' organizations were able to play an important role there because the members knew their organizations and they knew that accurate information could come from them. And we had even someone in the chat also mentioning that, how do we go about receiving contradictory information, be it on agricultural practices, but also on these topics that have affected each and every farmer seriously, most of all by the measures taken by government uh, in reducing replacement, uh, for example. So many farmers organizations were ready to play this role. They were operational. They have their systems in place to reach their members, be it by WhatsApp groups or USSD systems or bigger initiatives like eGranary from East African Farmers Federation, but also with ongoing collaborations with rural radios. On the other hand, we have also seen that uh, not every farmer's organization has in-house capacity to tackle this kind of topics. So while they're very much prepared on sharing information through extension services, but also through rural communication services on agricultural practices, um, behavioral change communication was not necessarily something they had all uh, the necessary preparation for. In the case of COVID, but also in the case of uh, climate change and working on topics like climate change, this behavioral change approach is also something that is very important. So quickly we saw that uh, collaborations were put in place with the Ministry of Health or other uh, NGOs or structures that could support them uh, in, able, in, in, in order for them to be able to uh, support their farmers and share the accurate um, information with them. So for future crises and ongoing crises, I think that the, here there is uh, still, uh, you know, some 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 scope for for work uh, that could be looked at uh, in terms of uh, rural uh, communication systems. Um, it is important to continue to work on this institu institutionalization of rural communication services. So it was already mentioned before. Um, this uh, mainstreaming of rural communication services has to take place at several levels be before we can go and look at national policies. So when we look at all these successful practices and lessons learned that were shared uh, before, um, this is what we need to capitalize on and adopt and ensure that also farmers organizations have the necessarily tools to improve what they're already doing and um, through doing it more and more systematically, have also the necessary credibility to voice and to advocate for mainstreaming of this type of services, but also the infrastructure that goes with it in national policies. Um, within uh, the EU IFAD funded uh, program that is called Farmers Organizations for Africa, Caribbean and the Pacific, the aim of the program is strengthening these uh, farmers' organizations. And this all for the benefit of their members, which are family farmers. It's a program that was designed by and for family farmers. And by supporting them in their institutional strengthening, they are increasing also their credibility and their capacities to advocate. And throughout this program, there's even a particular emphasis on doing this in the framework of the UN Decade of Family Farming. And I think we will hear maybe more uh, from Bafo later today. Great. Thank you, Alice. That was a good presentation. It's good to see uh, uh, that a recommendation on river change based on the COVID-19 um, situation and then the climate change is a very useful recommendations that 
um, would be relevant to RCS in family farming in Africa. So um, now uh, the next question will be to the audience. I would like to ask the audience, please put your comments in the chat box, or if you would like to speak, just raise up your hand. This is a two-minute session on, for the audience. So I would like to ask you, what are your needs in terms of support to family, farm, fa family farming policies and UNDFF with RCS, Rural Communication Services? So please, if you have um, any comments on what your needs are, what your needs are in terms of, of the support to family family policies and UNDFF in relation to rural communication services. Please, the chat box is open to me, two minutes. Um, yes, please, uh, Matthews. thank you. Hi everyone, <clears throat> I'll speak in English. Uh, my, I have a question. One thing that's been uh, that I've been grappling with is how to translate uh, our demands regarding rural communication services into policy. So it's not clear to me how does that take shape. One thing that I thought now, uh, listening to everyone, is that it should be part, of, for example, of the of the structures of every initiative to have a communication aspect to it, based on all we are saying here or following those principles. You see, that's one uh, proposal, but uh, maybe for the others that will speak, if you could uh, maybe share your thoughts on how does this take shape in public policy? Thank you, Matthias. Um, your question will be responded, but before that, Leon, please could you give your response, your comments? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first, uh, the comment I wanted to say that uh, in terms of uh, support uh, for communication, for uh, family farming, especially in rural areas, uh, yes, I uh, put the answer that uh, was given by my colleagues but you are going to understand that there are the interventions at different levels, but also in uh, some areas like ours here, especially in conflict areas where there are activities, where there are needs, the communication is not accessible. So um, the uh, trainings, uh, we don't have access and uh, 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 the family farmers, they have a hard time to communicate about their needs. And so uh, for us, uh, because we support those, uh, 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 those uh, small uh, holder uh, farmers in the rural areas, we have a hard time to reach them. And uh, sometimes with a message system, yes, we can go through, but as a feedback, sometimes they come back, they say, yes, but we don't have those tools. Yes, we can communicate, but how, with what? Um, sometimes you are going to find maybe a, a, a lady farmer that uh, 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 like maybe in a territory like Shambunda uh, that is a very rural and she has a hard time. She doesn't even know how to use a phone, a smartphone. Uh, this uh, communication tool, we don't have it. And so these days uh, we uh, tell ourselves, oh, maybe we should uh, uh, capacitate uh, the smallholder farmers on how they have, on how to do it, but we have a hard time to reach them. Maybe it will be good at our level uh, as, uh, with you as a partner to uh, implement uh, this uh, policy to support uh, this uh, woman, these uh, uh, woman farmers and those that are in the rural areas so that they can access to the information, but also that the journalists uh, 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 from different organizations can go there and reach them um, and uh, report their uh, problems and their needs. And so then we would have some alerts and uh, see how we can go and uh, address that together. 
there are also uh, different uh, relations in those conflict areas here in the east where you would understand that, oh uh, we you you went uh, to do some reporting and then this person was uh, was uh, was uh, taken and was raped uh, or maybe uh, this person was uh, doing uh, uh, was in her field and she was also uh, um, she uh, suffered from some violence and uh, was not uh, able to access to uh, to health care we don't know uh, how and where we are going to uh, meet the next victim and also access it, that's what's hard in those areas and also yeah. Uh, so I just, uh, 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 the interpreter has asked Leon to uh, slow down a little bit for interpretation. It was becoming uh, not possible. Et je veux demander aussi s'il y a moyen de réduire les interventions. I also want to ask uh, if there is a way to reduce the interventions. Is the mic still mine? Can I still say something? Thank you, Leon. Um, um, these are good points. Um, do you still have um, anything to add to that? Give you like one minute because we are out of time. Thank you uh, very much for this one minute that is uh, offered. I just wanted to say that us, as an organization that uh, support the uh, farmers in the village area, we have understood that we have uh, work to do, uh, not in the communication, not in the capacitation or in the monitoring and in the, uh, but to know uh, how to inform about about what they do and what they want to do, but we also need capacitation to be able to do all of that and also access in the, uh, to information in this area. It will come uh, slowly, slowly with our engagement, but we will really need this capacity. That's why we have asked uh, through this panel, your support uh, in our uh, research center, because our role is to do research and to come and inform uh, and inform on the needs and uh, the problems that uh, came up from the field. And if we don't, we are not equipped, if we don't have the material to do that, uh, uh, to be able to reach those farmers that are in, uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, very far in the villages, um, you would understand that uh, the needs will not be uh, reached uh, by everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Liam. These are great points. Um, Yes, it's necessary to have the right tools to reach the farmers. And the presentations that have um, been given um, addresses this and the following presentations as well would address this. It will be good to collaborate with you on, what, on the field you're working with and on, and also collaborate with the UN Casa Africa where more can be done. Um, I'll give the floor now to Mario to briefly give his comments. And then we'll go on with the moderation of the panel discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And now very, very quickly, and also based on the question by Mateus, but also the observation that have been raised. Um, here we're talking about uh, promoting rural communication services. There is more in the framework of, uh, let's say, policies, national action plans, institutionalization of something that has been tested, validated by the people. It is relevant for them. In any case, what is important, how, how to start? promoting participatory communication approaches bottom up. So in the context of local farmer organizations, have them assessing their needs and opportunities and build on the ground at the territorial level, alternative ways of using communication to serve the purposes of the farmers. So this is maybe a very simple, uh, very simple activities. The most important thing is to create awareness of the need to manage communication in a participatory way, whatever the tools are available, whatever, and especially based on contents that are relevant to the people. So people first, technology later. 
it doesn't mean we can we can work with everything with radio with with in, with the face to face communication but we have to try to 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 blend the most important thing is to go systematically and strategically uh, towards the identification of the needs and the opportunities of the local level. So build this capacity in farmers' organization at the local level and later scaling up at the higher level. And so to bring this in the policy agenda is the way forward. And we hope the truth in Casa will be able to support some of these processes. The demands are huge in the region. So I would think this is the first step forward. Over to you. Thank you, Mario. That's a good point. Thank you for clarifying the questions. And thank you, Blodin, for putting the organization up. That's a good organization that's dealing with women issues. So it would be good to share more information on this with us um, via the Yankasa email address, which we could share with you later on, um, so we can incorporate this in the Yankasa Africa. So the second question for the panelists, um, it's on what are the needs in terms of support to family farming policies and UNDFA with RCS. So I'll start with um, Omar Dio. Please, could you tell us, based on your experience um, in your organization and working with family farmers, can you tell us what your what needs and opportunities you would recommend to mainstream rural communication services for family farming in Omar, the floor is yours, please. Bon, merci encore. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, uh, sorry, I, w I left uh, to uh, go and pray. I uh, first wanted uh, to present our association. It's the only association that exists in the fishing domain. The association is uh, called so the Association for the uh, communicators it's an association that uh, was created in 2020 uh, with the uh, copa with the support of copa uh, and it's uh, the association for uh, uh, artisanal uh, fishing right now i am in the uh, uh, the offices of the copa uh, so to uh, follow uh, this uh, webinar. The other aspect, I know that communication has a very important role. Before, when we were talking about the fishing uh, sector, the people were not even listen to you because there was a fish, uh, everything was going well, but we, realize that uh, now there is a, a, a the, the the resources are becoming rare and so now people are uh, turning to the uh, fishing sector there were a lot of uh, programs uh, through radio uh, that uh, talk about uh, the different uh, the fishing domain there was a program uh, in the 80s before I was a fisherman, I did uh, I did a fishing for 12 years. So I can say that I have uh, 27 years of a career in the fishing domain. Our problem uh, here is that we don't have access to information uh, with within the authorities. So, uh, for example, the Ministry of uh, Fisheries and the the information that we receive, we uh, we obtain them uh, through different uh, uh, information like uh, Kaupa. They uh, put us in a relationship with other uh, organization to do some workshops. We really have a problem to access to uh, good information, real information. We also have a funding issue because the uh, uh, most of the people don't have salaries. Also, we also have a problem in terms of capacity building, because if you are a facilitator, you have to give the right information. And if you don't have, if you don't have that information, you cannot give the 
good information, the correct information, uh, to give the good information, the correct information, you have to be informed. And so we really have a problem with that. Another problem, we also have a, a, a means a problem is because sometimes we go in different areas to do some reporting and if you are not a, a, if you are not a, a, a employee you also are, you don't have the means uh, to uh, to go there uh, to use a transportation sometimes we have problems with our phones uh, to do the work or something else here in senegal you know that despite all our here. Difficulties. Go ahead, Ulama. Um, I'm sorry, but I'll have to interrupt you. We're running out of time. So if you could round up um, your comments. Thank you. D'accord. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Thank you, Omar, for that. It's good to see um, that. Um, there is a connection between the Ministry of Fisheries and uh, connecting you with another organization that is more like a peer-to-peer -peer learning experience for the farmers, which is one of the recommendations and lessons learned that was stated earlier. This is good and great to hear. So um, I'll give the floor now to Peter Nadumba. So Peter, please, based on your work experience with family farmer, family farming in Africa as a Southern Corporation officer. What would you say are the needs and opportunities you would recommend to mainstream rural communication services in Africa? Thank you very much, uh, Uloma, and uh, good afternoon to all the participants. Uh, good morning from wherever you are joining us from. Um, based on my experience, one of the biggest challenge, I wouldn't say it's a challenge, um, more or less uh, something that is lacking, is integrating rural communication service and national agriculture policies. For instance, you take the National Agriculture Development Plan. It is one of the areas whereby you can integrate, for instance, rural communication services. How are you able to give, for instance, voices to family farmers? It is true rural uh, communication services. So the two together goes alongside. You cannot separate rural communication services and leave uh, family farmers. So what I'm trying to say is that in uh, formulating policies for families farmers, you should include uh, uh, rural communication services as an, uh, an activity, ensuring that what whenever there is an agriculture or any intervention in the form of development or agriculture development program, it will have an impact on their rural livelihood, which is uh, rural communication is embedded. I would like to answer your question by giving you a specific example. In 2013, FAO implemented a project on reducing rural poverty through the cassava value chain. Now, one of the component was the Dimitra radio program. I will not repeat what Dimitra was because someone had already mentioned it. And the particular component targeted women and youth, which allowed beneficiaries to understand how they can participate in this program. This particular aspect of the project allowed them to discuss uh, relevant issues that has impact or affecting their lives. As a result of the intervention, the rural folks were able to participate in the formulation process of the district agriculture uh, development plan. This goes to demonstrate or indicate that rural communication plays a significant role when it comes to rural livelihood, if properly uh, managed. It is not only the district formulation processes. If you want to introduce, for instance, the adoption of technology, innovations, or even market information, when it is well embedded in national policies, you are able to uh, reach out uh, to the rural folks. Another, the last aspect that I would like to add is that in some countries, we've had good uh, examples like the Ghana one that I just cited. Embedding South South cooperation in national policies, allowing countries to share their experiences when it comes to rural communication services will go a long way to enhance and promote rural communication services at country level. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Peter. These are great points. Um, it's good to see that there's a project, um, there was a project in 2015, the Dimitri Radio Program, which embedded RCS. And it would be good to, if we could expand a little bit more on how we can embed the RCS in the National Agriculture Development Plan you earlier mentioned. Maybe you can give a few points on that. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. When I say embedding, uh, um, rural communication services in the National Agriculture Development Plan. For instance, you have, uh, now we have the National Committee of Family Farmers that are pushing to have a policy on family farming in the country. Now, if you take the policies for family farming, when they are doing the National Agriculture Development Plan, there is a broader and a wider consultation of already existing policies, you understand. So the National Farmer Agriculture Policy, the National Committee on Family Farmers are the ones to advocate during the formulation process of the National Agriculture Development Plan. This is the only way you can get the rural communication services embedded in the National Agriculture Service Plan. Once that is done, you also have to ensure the, the country who actually is the ownership of this policy have to ensure that programs or projects that are coming within the framework of agriculture always has that component of rural communication services, be it whatever program or project they're implementing, because it's already embedded in the National Agriculture Development Plan. If you remember, I had earlier mentioned that family farming, rural communication services goes hand in hand. It is linked. So if you want to be able to have voice for family farmers who are mostly peasant farmers, you have to ensure that it is embedded in the national uh, family farming agenda or policy. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying this. Um, this is great. Um, now, because we're out of time, we would move on to the next um, session. We'll skip the question to the panelists, to the um, audience, which is um, which is talking about how to, how what are your main priorities needs in participatory communication. So we'll skip this and move on to the way forward. So now I'll give the floor to um, Maria Kunzo to please talk about briefly talk about the recommendation for Global Forum on RCS. Mm -hmm. Yes, hello everyone again. This afternoon session is really amazing. So many inspiring contributions from different different voices, different perspectives, really amazing. So what we have seen until now as three main big dimension of the work in rural communication services. So the priorities that have been expressed also, uh, you know, several, according to the trends and to, uh, to the emergence trends that have been that have been captured in the study that have been discussed but also needs and opportunities no, that we went through we went through and uh, are also part of this uh, um, the analysis emerging from the case studies from the discussion from the different panelists and the different session that we we had until now and and now we need also to focus a bit on the road so what next so the next is to see how to we address all these priorities, the needs and opportunities through this roadmap. So we can go ahead, maybe analyzing those activities. So within the context of Yencasa, Yencasa try to address the issue of rural communication services in the context of family farming along three main lines of work. And one of these lines of work focuses essentially on rural communication services per se as a dimension of the policy making but also of the, of the support to ongoing initiative on the ground. But there are other two dimensions that are very relevant, the awareness raising and the capacity development. So let's say now we want to focus on these three dimensions as a really concrete uh, roadmap uh, to, to, to face and to tackle the issue of rural promotion of rural commission services from the ground and also at the policy level. So, along these three lines of work that are part of the Yenkas Africa. I may give the floor back to, to Loma. Please, Loma. Thank you, Mario. 
So now I'll give the floor to uh, Francesco to briefly talk about the awareness raising based on the Yenkasa Radio Initiative. Thank you, Rama. Well, very simply, um, for us, it's, uh, as we said, it's extremely important to use radios, local radios, uh, in order to foster the communication in local languages. The radio initiative that is going to start very soon is basically concentrated in six different countries in, uh, uh, in Africa, Ghana, Kenya, Madagascar, Togo, Tanzania, and Zambia and will consist in a series of radio programs to be developed uh, by these local radio stations in conjunction with farmers organizations. So we are going really to foster the collaboration between radio stations and farmer organizations. Uh, and in the meantime, this will open the road, will pave the road for a longer term collaboration that we would like, of course, to develop. We support this initiative at the beginning. We put them in the condition to continue, and we are going to enlarge the number of countries. This will start very soon. July, we are going to do it, and we are there to start. Over to you, Ulama. Thank you, Francesco. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, now I'll give the floor to Sophie to um, speak about experiencing digitalization. Sophie, please. Yes, so part of the awareness raising, uh, we have also um, knowledge uh, sharing platforms and tools. So, of course, the Yenkasa website is where you will be able to find all the material for the campaigns of what is happening. Uh, we know that some people prefer to actually have access uh, to Facebook and be able to discuss. So we also have uh, the Yenkasa Facebook group. And we have now created a um, discussion group on D group, which will enable to actually have discussion uh, via email. And so if you all agree, um, what we are thinking of doing is to invite you to join this uh, Yenkasa uh, discussion group. Uh, so we can continue and this can be done in several uh, languages, in French and in English. So this is uh, regarding the awareness uh, raising aspects. Thank you, Uloma. Thank you, Sophie. Um, quickly, I, also, I give the floor now to Chelsea to quickly speak about the participatory video. Thank you, Loma. Um, yeah, so a lot of exciting activities coming up. So regarding the participatory video, uh, we will be conducting a training with the objective to, number one, help participants understand the community video production process. And number two, help participants understand the participatory uh, video approach of, of sharing these videos, disseminating them. So the video production training will include um, activities such as needs assessment, planning your videos, identifying the right subjects, working with subject matter experts on the thematic uh, topics of the video, um, the technical skills for shooting video, like using camera and light, lighting, storyboarding, sound and music use in video, editing, and approvals and quality control protocols are necessary to have a outstanding video to share with farmers. The video sharing portion of the training will include things like understanding your audience, sharing the videos the, through various different platforms and in person, adult learning principles, facilitation, and also um, collecting feedback. So the, uh, the plan is to have a hybrid training session where there's a live online session for a few hours and also some self-learning activities uh, that should be completed daily. Um, we are yet to set a date, but we will share all these details soon as, and as well with other materials. And hopefully we'll have a lot of your members participating in these trainings. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jesse, for that explanation. I'll give the floor again to Mario to briefly talk about the Rural Communication Services Policy and um, survey. If you can quickly touch base and touch on that. And yes, thank you. I mean, as we know, this, uh, this, uh, this forum is also based on, on, a, on a regional study and a technical consultation around rural communication services. So this will be, um, this, this study will be completed, will be completed, will be, uh, will be also um, linked to study other regional studies for, uh, for Asia and for Latin America. And the conclusion will be, uh, will be blended in, in a policy brief that will be presented at the Global Dialogue on Family Farming in September. So we will have a regional study and uh, on, on the trends, on the experiences and rural commission services in Africa. The idea eventually is this study uh, that can, would be, uh, become a tool for, for um, Yenkasa to monitor the situation of rural commission services on a regular basis. Hopefully to have a biannual report to inform uh, to inform, let's say, the regional FAO conferences or other important get events on the on the access by family farmers to rural communication services and continue the dialogue huh? in discussion and dialogue with farmers organizations. This will include, of course, mapping of the appropriation of community media, media by farmers organizations and the city applications and the policy frameworks that are in place these days. Over. Roma, over to you. Technical hitch. Um, thank you, Mario. Sorry, I had a technical issue there, but I'm back on. Um, now, briefly, I'll give the floor to Peter once again to talk about the RCS Embeddings and Program Initiative for Family Farmers. If you could quickly uh, briefly speak on that. Uloma, could you please uh, speak a bit uh, louder for translation? Yes, we, we are not hearing you very well. You need to speak a bit louder. About how we can embed rural communication services in program initiative right. for family okay. farmers. Okay, thank you very much. I don't know how many FAO colleagues are online with us, but uh, to be able to embed uh, rural communication uh, services in FAO programs, the idea is to be able to, uh, for instance, when we are formulating new programs or new project or new initiative, there is a need to have a consultation with the rural communication team to be able to embed it from the design stage and not when we are doing the midterm review. And this goes out to especially uh, countries where we already have um, uh, national uh, committee for family farming they need to not be shy, but approach FAO, EFAT, to ensure that whenever there is a new program project coming to the country, their voices are heard so that it is involved. They, they, I mean, at the design stage, they are involved in the formulation process. This will ensure that rural communication is captured as a component of a program or a project or an initiative. I just want to quickly add that on the 14th of uh, July, the regional office will be organizing a regional dialogue on family farming with a team boosting the resilience of family farmers to adopt to food crisis and improve access to technology and innovations in Africa. Sophie will be talking on this platform. I will en encourage most of the participants or listeners on this platform to join to be able to uh, articulate their voices with regards to what are their needs for family farmers because this will then be carried on to the Global Forum of Family Farmers that will be held in September. Thank you very much, Uloma. Thank you, Peter. And lastly, I'll give the floor to Grace to talk about capitalized case studies. Um, Grace, please. Briefly. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uloma, hope you could hear me. Yes, we can hear you. All right, uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm speaking from an uh, academic perspective and um, at the University of Reading. Uh, based on our research work here at the University of Reading, we have learned that uh, good communication is not just about um, clear or verbal written articulations. 
but rather it's a combination of skills um, that includes listening, uh, understanding and sharing of information. So based on that, we have three issues to be considered as far as um, rural communication services is concerned. Number one is um, building evidence. Uh, this entails taking time to ask, listen, and understand the views, aspirations, and needs of those you are communicating with. And uh, in this case, you're talking about farmers. There is need to learn from their lived experiences as to what works well for them in terms of a communication and what is not, and ask the reasons why. And point number two is that uh, rural communication services should be supported by uh, case studies. This means a uh, documentation of success stories. And uh, this should be uh, presented in various formats, uh, including audio, videos, and photography. This is because, as you already highlighted, farmers are looking for alternative sources of information. And again, farmers are motivated to hear and see how technologies are transforming fellow farmers. And point number three to be considered is uh, evidence-based communication. This one should be the basis for the rural communication services. And this could be achieved um, by drawing lessons from evaluation of various programs, uh, continuous research, working with our research partners to come up with uh, new ideas, um, working with um, academia and the experts in order to um, come up with new um, uh, ideas and expertise. And again, um, there is needed to work with existing partners in uh, communication sectors in um, um, where uh, the project has been uh, implemented. So basically from uh, academic side, we have three points to be considered, building evidence, um, RIC to be supported by case studies and to be evidence-based communication. So this is our contribution. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, that's the end of the brief award. I'll give the floor back to Sophie to continue with the sessions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Uloma. And as we were capitalizing, I just uh, recall uh, participants that uh, part of our capacity development program, we will have uh, um, a course on uh, experience capitalization. So maybe we can move to the next slide, please, uh, Francesco. You, we can um, actually, so I would like, uh, as um, Peter has already uh, mentioned to us, to re recall what are the next steps and part of the next steps are the next events. So we will invite you all to the 11th of July event, uh, which is going to take place online, which is um, an inclusive rural communication for family farming, and it is a forum including the three different regions. And uh, also on the 14th of July, uh, if you're interested in knowing more about what is being done on family farming and activities in the region, um, you are also all invited uh, to that one. And of course, uh, there will be our major event in September, and you will be informed in due course. So let's go um, to the next. I'm just showing this slide so that you know how to contact us uh, via email. We have a newsletter and you can subscribe to it going to our website using that address. Of course, our website is in French and in English, and I invite you to visit it uh, as much as uh, visiting our Facebook page. And you can also follow us uh, uh, on Twitter. So in the next slide, I have just a few more information that I wish to share. Francesco, uh, yes, thank you very much. It's, um, if you want to be part of Yankasa, uh, if you are interested to move forward, we really welcome you joining the working groups. We have one working group on uh, communication and awareness raising campaign. So if you're interested, if you want to share what you're doing with radio program or other programs, please uh, indicate that you would like to join. If you're having uh, courses or if you have something or want to be part of something on capacity development, uh, whether it's about radio, which is a participatory video, on online course on communication for development or experience capitalization, please let us know that. And if you want to actually implement 
and to share with us also the evidence of rural communication services, this is also the possibility to join a working group on this. And uh, the discussion can continue, and I will invite you, uh, if you are, have no objection, to join our D group, and you will receive an invitation in the following days. So we can move to the next uh, slide, which is almost the last one. In, it is the last one. So um, I would like to thank you all, but I will not be doing the closing. We still have uh, Emirates from PAFO, uh, who will address us now. And uh, at the very end, uh, we will have a poll. So please stay with us. And uh, Emirates, I'm really pleased that uh, PAFO can give us the uh, closing uh, remarks. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Sophie. Good afternoon or good morning, ladies and gentlemen, depending on where you are connecting from. It's a great honor and a pleasure to deliver the closing remark of this important event, the General Forum on Rural Community Services for Family Family in Africa, on behalf of PAFO President, who was unable to join us due to other engagement. Today, most of family farmers lives in a disadvantaged rural area with limited access to communication facilities. Their self-reliance is significantly affected by limited access to information and to communication services. As farmers' organization, we believe that there is a need to do more to support knowledge, dialogue, and communication processes that allows communities to speak out to express their aspiration and concern and to participate in the decisions that relate to their development. This implies the key role of communication as an asset for farmers and the need to integrate it into family farming policies. By proclaiming in 2014 the International Year of Family Farming, the UN has put farmers at the center of the international development agenda and has underlined the need to collectively move toward a more inclusive and sustainable approach and policy Sorry. in agriculture. Emrens, can I please ask you just to slow down a little bit for interpretation? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, the challenge now is to promote institutional and policy framework that will allow equitable access to information and communication services, and that will ensure the active participation of family farmers in development processes. So to raise awareness on the role of rural communication services for family farming in Africa as drivers for innovation and social changes in rural areas. So this event is important to provide an operational framework for achieving outcome 4.4 of the decade of family farming action plan, which calls for a better communication and increased awareness of the role and challenges of family farmers to promote mechanisms for policy dialogue, knowledge sharing, and to promote the rural communication services agenda as part of the UN Decade of Family Farming in Africa. PAFO, being the continental body of uh, Africa. Emirates, try to speak slowly. Emirates, try to speak slowly, please, for the interpretation, please. Yes, unfortunately, interpretation is not possible when uh, text is read like this. Body of uh, African farmers' organization will represent the voices of dozens of millions of smallholder farmers. We have been actively involved in the process of UN Decade of Family Farming. We are a member of the International Steering Committee established to oversee the implementation of UN Decade of Family Farming, whereby we are represented by our member network of farmers and producers organization in West Africa, Europa. So as PAFO, we work closely with different partners. We work with farmers, or, uh, with FO through Yankaza Initiative. And we also work with IFAD through the Farmers Organization for Africa, Caribbean and Pacific program, as it has been presented by my colleague, Alice. I know she do a great work to support farmers' organization in terms of uh, communication. So, Alice, I thank you so much for the great work you are doing. 
So we work not only, of course, on promoting our programs, but also to raise awareness on farmers' aspiration and preoccupation, as well as highlighting opportunities available for farmers and other stakeholders. I followed with very much interest the different impressive experiences presented and how they impact the livelihood of rural communities. I believe this kind of platform to promote and share the experience must be encouraged to share the knowledge, but also to scale up the good practices that already exist. So I believe to attain an effective communication, able to contribute on transformation on family farmers' livelihood, we must work together to promote a conducive environment for investing in reinforcing community-based communication services and to ensure access to infrastructure and communication tools that are affordable to rural communities, most particularly to women and youth. So I thank you very much for this opportunity. Over. Thank you very much, Emrens. Uh, this was a real challenge for the interpreter. So we would really be pleased if you could share your speech with us so that we can put it on Yen Casa website as your We will also do the translation into French for our friends who are French speaking. So thank you very much for these nice words for also uh, highlighting the importance of sharing good practices so that we can scale them up uh, in the region. And we know the importance of PAFO being not only a member of Yenkasa, but also part of the steering committee on the UN decade for family farming. So colleagues and friends, I have one last thing that I would like to do with you. And it's a short poll. We would like to hear from you whether this uh, forum was useful and therefore how satisfied you are with it. And then we have also um, another question. Oh. Um, yeah, and I see that it isn't. So what is your level of satisfaction uh, of uh, this workshop? So I'm, I'm waiting uh, for you uh, to actually uh, give me your uh, information. Um, I had another qu question. It's, it was how useful when you're satisfied or, or not. It's or useful. It was for, it is for your work and also what is the, the, the second question which you don't see there but um, it is have you learned something new uh, i know that some of you have learned things like what we were saying about radio program having the voice of a woman for the feedback to actually involve more uh, women farmers for example so you can also um, put your comments uh, in the chat uh, as we welcome everything, uh, whether in the chat or in the poll. So I'm going to show you now uh, the, the results. And here it is. So um, I would like also to thank very much Clementina, who has been uh, with us all the time doing this incredible work to switch languages and uh, being with us all the time without the support of another interpreter. Uh, I would like also to thank um, all the people who help us uh, preparing the workshop, um, this um, forum, and I would like to give the floor to Hannah, uh, who has been behind the scenes with uh, different uh, roles and hats. So um, Hannah, please. Um, oh, I would like to also have a few words from your side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sophie, and also thanks to Clementina, to the organizers, and of course, all of our participants today. We really appreciate your attendance and your participation. Uh, so on behalf of Farm Radio International and all of our staff, thank you sincerely for all of your contributions and ideas. I thought this was a really rich and exciting exchange 
And I think there is going to be a lot of follow up from this um, between participants today who have noticed um, areas of synergy or collaboration and um, also uh, new people joining uh, the working groups of Yankesa, which is so important and so vital and I hope that we can see you in those working groups very soon. Um, we are over time, so I won't take too long, but again, I want to say thank you very much. Um, participatory communication, um, rural communication services is at the heart of what we do at Farm Radio. And so it is incredible to see all of the work, uh, complementary work uh, being done. And I hope that we can continue to learn from each other, find synergies and contribute to this really worthy goal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for all the organization who have participated. Thank you to all the speakers. Uh, this was uh, quite uh, interesting, innovative, and uh, this is not uh, um, a bye-bye because we are going to see each other very soon. So it's uh, what we say in Italian, arrivederci, so see you soon. Um, so thank you very much to all, and uh, we will contact you very soon. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye from Bujumbura. Bye. Good. It was good. Bye from Uganda. Bye-bye. Oh, Bye. Get again, Jeff. Get again, Jeff. Yes. Happy I'm Bujumbura. from Bujumbura. <laughs> I'm from Bujumbura now. In the... Get again, Jeff. Bye, Bye from Liberia. Bye. 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 Bye from Liberia. Okay, thank you. Bye again, Joe. Nice to see you again. Bye again, Joe. Merci, Omar. Merci, Joe, Sophie. Merci, merci. Merci. Et euh, on, on ne s'arrête pas ici. Le chemin continue. D'accord, d'accord. Merci. En tout cas, c'est bien vraiment parce que nous avons besoin de votre accompagnement tout au long de notre parcours hein, dans nos actions. On a pris bonne note, Léon. On a pris bonne note. Merci, Sophie. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Michael. Great, Sophie, I'll go ahead and end the meeting. Uh... Okay, I think we will have a lot of work now because um, there we have a good participation, even from Egypt and Middle East. And I've seen also people from Asia, from Nepal joining. So we had quite a, an interesting and a large participation. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Michael. Good to see you. And thank you to Oloma and also to Francesco, who have been behind the scenes and preparing these things. Okay, so thank you so much. And um, for the organizer, uh, thank you we will... for the opportunity. Bye bye. Bye bye, Posta. <laughs>